One of the most important differences between utility theory, that is consumer theory, and the theory of the firm is that when we discuss the utility function, u equals f of x and y, we usually assume that utility was not measurable. Now, perhaps it actually is, and psychologists seem to think that uh, that one can say useful things about absolute values of utility and about comparisons of utility between one person and another. But economists, at least traditional position, has been that utility is not measurable. Whereas the production function, Q equals F of W and fertilizer, has output that clearly is measurable. We can clearly measure how much corn is being produced by uh, a farmer, and you can measure that in terms of bushels, in terms of liters, or whatever. So the measurability of the output of the production function is quite in contrast to the, to the fact that we can only measure ordinarily the utility function. That's going to lead to us having a lot more different concepts in producer theory that we don't have in consumer theory. And as an example, we'll introduce returns to scale right now. Using these three definitions that I've typed. If the first one says that doubling inputs leads to more than doubling of output, we say we have constant returns to scale. Okay, I just fixed that. It should be increasing returns to scale. Let me read it back. If a doubling of inputs leads to a more than doubling of output, then you have increasing returns to scale. And the second definition, if a doubling of inputs leads to exactly a doubling of output, then we have constant returns to scale. And finally, if a doubling of inputs leads to a less than doubling of output, we have decreasing returns to scale. I'm going to be talking about these so often that I'm going to use the following abbreviations. Increasing returns to scale, I'll abbreviate with an up arrow and then RS. Constant returns to scale, I'll abbreviate with C, RS. And decreasing returns to scale, I'll abbreviate with a D down arrow and then RS. Note that decreasing returns to scale doesn't say that when you double inputs you get less output. That's al almost uh, does never happens. I mean, it, of course, it, it can happen, but under our assumption that more inputs produces more outputs, that won't happen. Doubling inputs just means you'll get more output, but not double the amount of output. You'll get less than double the amount of output. So that's what decreasing returns to scales to scale means. As a graphical illustration of this, let's contrast this with rate of technical substitution. Now, you'll recall in terms of abbreviations here that rate of technical substitution or the rate of technical substitution of water for fertilizer or a fertilizer for water was abbreviated RTS. Some caution is required here. So RTS stands for rate of technical substitution. You will notice that that RTS series of letters is the same series of letters that appears in returns to scale. It's important then not to confuse these two. The, the abbreviation I use for rate of technical substitution is what I said in the last lesson, RTS. I do not use RTS ever to refer to returns to scale. If I'm just talking about returns to scale, I'll say returns to scale. And if I'm talking about increasing returns to scale, constant returns to scale, decreasing returns to scale, I'll use the abbreviations that I wrote over here. So don't confuse rated technical substitution with returns to scale. Now let me show you 
graphically what their difference is. The rate of technical substitution had to do with the curvature of the isoquant. For example, is it steep here, flat here, as is the usual case? That's not what returns to scale is asking. Let me show you what returns to scale is asking on this graph. Suppose that this is 2 and this is 3. So, and this is 5 bushels. So if you use 2 gallons of water and 3 pounds of fertilizer, you produce 5 bushels. Here's the returns to scale question. If you double inputs, because remember, we are always talking about doubling inputs having to do with returns to scale. So if you double inputs, which means water goes to 4 and fertilizer goes to 6, then the returns to scale question is how much output do you have? Do you more than double output, less than double output, or exactly double output? Now the original output before you double the inputs, the original output here was 5 bushels. So the question is where is the 10 bushel isoquant? If for example the 10 bushel isoquant were here Then by going to the point 4 comma 6, which is here, you've gone beyond the 10 bushel isoquant. And therefore, you're maybe at 12 bushels. So doubling water from 2 to 4 and doubling fertilizer from 3 to 6 ended up more than doubling corn output. Corn output didn't merely go to 10, it went all the way to 12. So that would be increasing returns to scale. Whereas if the 10 bushel isoquant we're in a different position, like if it were here instead, then you can see that the question mark would fall below the 10 bushel isoquant. So moving from 2 comma 3 to 4 comma 6 wouldn't have enabled you to reach the 10 bushel isoquant, and that would be decreasing returns to scale. And finally, if the 10 bushel isoquant went right through the 4 comma 6 point, then doubling the inputs would have led to an exactly doubling of the output and then you'd be at constant returns of scale. So the returns of scale question is a question of m moving from one isoquant to another whereas the rate of technical substitution question was just looking at one isoquant and seeing how its slope varied from one part of the isoquant to another part of the isoquant. So rate of technical substitution are these these um, uh, blue the, bright blue lines having to do with slope, whereas returns to scale is moving from one isoquant to another isoquant. Finally, let me give you a simple algebraic illustration. In the next lesson, we'll do more complicated algebraic illustrations. Suppose that Q equals W to the one-half, F to the one-half. Find the returns to scale of this production function. So what you have to do is double the inputs and see what happens. So instead of using W, you write twice W, and instead of using fertilizer, you write twice the amount of fertilizer and see what happens. A more careful way of doing this is suppose the initial amount of fertilizer is W0, and the initial amount of uh, initial amount of water is W naught, and the initial amount of fertilizer is F naught, and then the initial corn output Q naught would be W naught to the one half, F naught to the one half. Now I want to hap see what happens if W naught changes by doubling and F naught changes by doubling. So if I have two W naught and two F naught, what is my new output? Well, the what the formula tells you to do is take the amount of water you have, whatever it is, and raise it to the one-half power. Then take the amount of fertilizer you have, whatever it is, and raise it to the one-half power, and then multiply those two. So the new amount of water I have is this. 
So what the formula told me to do is take it to the 1 half power to start out with. So I'm going to take it to the 1 half power. Then the formula said take the amount of fertilizer that I have, which is this, and raise it to the 1 half power. So I'm going to do that, 2f0 to the 1 half power, and then multiply those two together. And that will be the new quantity. Now, recall from algebra that, for example, xy raised to the a power is x to the a times y to the a. So, parentheses 2w0 to the 1 half power is 2 to the 1 half w0 to the 1 half. Similarly, parentheses 2f0 close to the 1 half power is 2 to the 1 half f0 to the 1 half. So this is 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the 1 half w0 to the 1 half f0 to the 1 half. You'll recall that x to the a times y to the a is... Um, <laughs> actually, that's not as useful as the next one. x to the a times uh, x to the b is x to the a plus b. That's what I want for now. So this is an a over here. So 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the 1 half is 2 to the 1 half plus 1 half. And you'll note that w naught to the 1 half, f naught to the 1 half, what we said over here is q naught. So this is just q naught. And 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the 1 half is 2 to the first power, which we can just write as 2. So this is 2q naught. So what I have is that the new quantity is twice the old quantity, and I conclude that this production function is constant returns to the scale. So that's a f fairly straightforward example of how to work it out with algebra. More examples are going to come next. Before going there, I want to point out the following, which is actually fairly important. So look at how I wrote this. I had a new quantity of 2w0 and a new quantity of 2f0, and I plugged those into the production function as you, s as you see there. This would be, well, this would have been wrong. If I had left out the parentheses, and I had just written 2 w naught to the 1 half, 2 f naught to the 1 half, then I would have gotten 2 times 2 times w naught to the 1 half times f naught to the 1 half, which is 4 times the old quantity. And that is the wrong answer. The correct answer is 2 times the old quantity, not 4 times the old quantity. So the parentheses are really important. It never hurts to put parentheses in. In this example, in other words, when you're going from w0 to 2w0, put the 2w0 in parentheses, and then when you're going from f0 to f0, put the f0 in parentheses. So that never hurts, and it can be necessary in order to get the right answer. So we'll do more examples in the next lesson.